Hey guys, VBAD here with another V plays, and we're hopping into the S199, which is essentially the Israeli version of a BF109, but in the form of a multi roll. So it only gets two 20s and two 13 millimeter machine guns, and then it gets four 70 kilogram bombs. The reload on the bombs is 90 seconds, and we have also combined this with pneumatic controls, which allows us to be able to get increased maneuverability for 10 seconds every 90 seconds for the cooldown. So if you think about that, we got two capabilities that can be triggered every 90 seconds. So we can help start the flip of a zone through air to ground ordnance, and then we can immediately go to a dogfight scenario, hitting that pneumatic control and killing off some air defense aircraft, and then moving on to the next sector. Many times I have mentioned that I feel as though multi rolls are kind of your zone flippers. They're the ones that you should be utilizing to get the advantage on the enemy by continually flipping zones, essentially on the periphery or maybe going into the major dog pile in the center. There we were able to work to great effect with our partner aircraft that are flying in this same area trying to take this sector. And you'll note that in this battle I'm trying to utilize the cannons as the primary weapon because. Again, like I've stated many times before, when you have a mixed gun loadout, typically utilizing the heaviest caliber gun as your primary weapon just allows the other guns to essentially be there to augment. Just beware of false hit indicators from the lower caliber machine guns or cannons that are impacting earlier, and make sure you're pulling sufficient lead in order to maximize the aforementioned effects. We do get 12 seconds of boost with this airframe, and while it doesn't have the best altitude performance, at tier 6 being able to get up to about 4,500 feet uh, is going to be quite advantageous. You can see here we're letting the cannons make contact against that Yak-1M. That's going to be our most maneuverable, most dangerous fighter we're coming up against, and now we're going to assist our allies by taking out this Corsair. We really just picked off what was left of that aircraft at this point, and we are, again, we're in the center, and we're trying to take this zone by getting into the dog pile with all the rest of our friendly aircraft and augmenting their overall damage output. Again, letting those 20s make contact first, and you can see they're doing a lion's share of the damage here, which allows us to be able to get a lot more damage on target after those 13s managed to settle in when the aircraft kind of changes its departure from us. There is a player in a Corsair down here, and this is an aircraft that I want to make sure I'm paying attention to. Corsair is a fairly nimble multi-role aircraft, and with four 20 millimeter cannons can be quite the dangerous threat for us. We've already got him down to pretty low health, and we managed to finish him off. And I'm still wary of a lot of the aircraft in this zone, but I think it's about time to move on to the next sector. There are two allies, as well as a bunch of air defense aircraft, essentially focusing down the remaining multi-role left in that sector. I do see Commander Viper up here in the B-17G, and by hitting the indicator on him, I'm hoping that some of my friendly aircraft nearby will vector in for intercept. I see he just did a run with a B-17G here, and I'm not sure how exactly he did his run, but it looks like he may have been going just a little bit too fast, so I'm coming in from underneath him, and I'm dropping my bombs on the center site. Normally, I'd never be able to take out a large center structure like that, but since it was already pre-damaged, it made it that much easier, and we were able to take out that one aircraft we were chasing. There was an air defense aircraft up above that managed to take out the B-17G, which allowed us to flip the zone rather quickly. Again, we're letting the 20s do a lion's share of the work here. But just a, a note here, I do this incorrectly. I'm coming up and over and straight back down on him. Look how much velocity I'm gaining, even though I'm trying to hit the air brakes, and I'm just flying right past him. And I get indecisive and think I can turn in front of him. Your best move when going after a slow-moving ground attacker like this is to actually vector in behind him and turn sideways. Don't do an up and over, because up and overs build up too much momentum, and you'll over come the aircraft too quickly and your guns won't be able to achieve maximum effect. Alright, now we got a Mosquito 26, which is the 
Chinese version of a mosquito and we are vectoring in for an intercept but we do have Franz here and the Focke Wolf 190D which has the same type of cannon configuration you see with the ME410 which is a tier 6 heavy so essentially a heavy mounted on a fighter platform and we are going to start working our way back towards the middle because our team was able to lock down the other mining plants so a relatively quick battle for us and a solid victory but it was all achieved through rapid capture of multiple zones we essentially did a tic-tac-toe right across the middle and we were able to grab all three sectors now we are going to fight over the middle and while we're not necessarily outnumbering the enemy right now i feel as though we're in a good spot we're looking to find the aircraft that is on the same plane as us and is heading in a relatively same direction. The other aircraft I had locked up initially was actually departing from us, so it wasn't going to be a primary concern. Now we've taken out the haunted tank, or is that hunted? The hunted tank, which is a human player, and now he is gone. And this, I believe, is a human player as well, so we're trying to get guns on. Again, letting those 20s kind of cool down so they can get good effect. And that aircraft managed to get knocked out, not by, not by us, but by our bombers, tail gunners, which is fortunate for us. All right, solid victory overall, and we managed to take out a little bit of everything, as you can see indicated by the medals here. Let's go ahead and get back to the hangar and talk about this aircraft just a little bit more and why I think it's a solid contender as an aircraft you may want to add to your inventory. So actually following the advice of uh, one of my commenters here, Goulash1000, he actually mentioned utilizing the pneumatic steering. What is that? Is that what this is called? I barely ever use it. Pneumatic control assist <clears throat> as kind of a force multiplier. So I've always talked about multi-rolls being in aircraft type that's really meant for flipping zones. And his point was, and, and not on this aircraft, but just in multi-rolls in general, is utilizing the air to ground munitions to be able to get a bunch of the capture and then utilizing the ability to kill aircraft and blitz away at the health pool of a bunch of your air defense aircraft but by using pneumatic control assist you can get around on those targets quicker which allows you to be able to flip a zone faster and then with the 90 second cooldown combined with what's the reload on these no, coincidentally, 90 seconds on the bombs allows you to be able to maximize your effectiveness from zone to zone. So figure it probably takes you about 90 seconds, give or take, to be able to get to the next iteration or next zone to do a capture cycle. So that's really where this comes into play. I will talk to you in a second. Sorry, Commander Viper. Uh, but thanks for the comment. Do appreciate it. So... This aircraft, the S199 Sakine, I'm probably butchering that, but this is uh, one of the new European aircraft, and this was supposed to be an Israeli aircraft, which is one of the many BF-109s that was essentially prolifer proliferated, proliferated after World War II to a multitude of different countries just because there were so many stockpiled. I mean, heck, the Mustang was used all the way up until I think the 90s down in South America as a patrol aircraft. So solid airframes, really good at doing their job, which was to you know, be an airborne asset as well as have the ability to operate as a sky so this aircraft doesn't necessarily have anything over what you would see at tier six from a traditional bf 109 much like what we see with where's my tier five german there we go much like my bf 109 e3 isn't anything better than the actual bf 109 e or a meal at tier five that aircraft is actually better than the premium and in a lot of ways the traditional bf 109 is better than this airframe but this is a multi-role and classed as a multi-role it allows it to be able to carry four of these 70 kilogram bombs and they're not spectacular by any means but for tier six they're good enough and again it's going to be combined with an average turn time, uh, an average airspeed, average altitude performance, which kind of puts it right in that nice middle ground of being <laughs> an aircraft that can do multiple rolls. Go figure. So 
it is a fairly enjoyable aircraft to play. It took me a few games to remember how to fly a multi-role that could turn at all. So, you know, a nice change of pace for me. And I went with American because I thought it would be funny to see a BF-109 drawn up in American colors with the 4th of July posted on the side of it. Uh, but in addition to that, most of my multi-role pilots that have any type of air-to-ground buff are going to be on my American side anyway, so as you can see, I'm training up even more my F2G pilots. So just an opportunity to make a few more credits and fly an aircraft that's kind of fun. So you know what? I think it's a solid aircraft, and if you like multi-roles, this is a good bet to go with. Like I've said with the European Tech Tree, the European Tech Tree is nothing but a plethora of really good training platforms for you to be able to utilize. So in conclusion, essentially the S199 is going to be a solid aircraft for anybody who really likes flying multi-roles as well as the BF-109, so it gives you the best of both worlds. Uh, like I said, I seem to be enjoying it, and if this seems like it's your cup of tea, by all means, go for it, and you can use it as a trainer for any nationality, which I think is really the true benefit of the European line. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll catch you on the next one.